He's the co-author of one of the two balanced budget amendments that the Senate is like to consider very soon. He's a good friend of the show, and we welcome him back. Senator Hatch, it's always a pleasure. Welcome back to Freedom Watch. Well, nice to be with you, Judge. Keep doing the good job you're doing. Thank you. Now, I know that you have struggled for many years to put a lid on federal spending, and you have not succeeded. No matter which party, your own or the Democrats, controlled the White House or the body in which you sit, the Senate. And I know that you believe in all your heart that the balanced budget amendment will work. But if the balanced budget amendment, yours and, and Mike Lee's, not Senator Udall's, the one that would require a two-thirds vote to, to change it, becomes the law. Aren't we effectively changing spending power from the Congress and the President to the courts? Because if you want to spend more, isn't somebody going to sue and a federal judge will make these decisions? Not according to the amendment we have. Our amendment would really put the screws to the Congress and, and just say, look, we're going to put a straitjacket on you because you guys can't get spending under control. And frankly, it's the liberal community that can't do it. Uh, you know, I've been here a long time. And we have never had a fiscal conservative majority in the Senate. We've always had three to six more liberal uh, Republicans who will go with the all liberal Democrats. And we've just got to have that kind of restraint. I've uh, actually sponsored or co-sponsored 20 different balanced budget amendments, and I brought five to the floor, two of which came within one vote of passage. The last was in 1997. We lost it by one vote. I had 60 votes as I walked to the floor right. and uh, was ready to make the final arguments when I was told that John Hines of Pennsylvania had caved into the unions in his state, even though he'd been with us all the way through. And, of course, we lost by one vote. We had 66 votes. We needed 67. Right. Aren't, aren't, you imagine you, what, aren't you likely you, to, even, even though this is clearly a step in the right direction, I have my misgivings about it, but it manifests, a, if it passes, an institutional intention to put a cap on federal spending. But aren't you likely to suffer the same fate now? Or, or stated differently, is there a chance this will pass the Senate and then the House and then be sent to the states? Well, the important thing about this is this is the first, first time we've had every Republican on board, all 47. Now, we would need 20 Democrats to stand up and say, we're tired of what's happening to our country. We're going to vote for this, and we're going to get some spending restraint uh, in the, in the uh, government of the United States. They're, uh, you know, it's your, your best guess whether they'll do that. I personally think it's going to be very difficult for them to do it, but it's still a worthwhile thing to fight this matter so All everybody right. in the country can understand. And, and what you want everybody in the country to understand is that the spending is out of control and the right. Congress cannot be trusted to spend the people's money because it will, it will borrow more money than it collects and it will spend the borrowed money. But there is a provision in this amendment which would allow an override by a two-thirds vote. I'm wondering, might it That's be easier true. just to change the Senate rules? to require a two-thirds vote to increase spending rather than to try and change the fundamental law of the land and worry about getting this thing ratified by three-quarters of the states. We've always tried uh, methods like that, but nothing short of a constitutional uh, amendment will solve this problem, and even that will be uh, attacked by those who want to spend and spend and spend again. Remember when we did the Graham Rumman haulings, it was a well thought out piece of legislation. It lasted about a year until they found ways around it and, and went right, right ahead with their spending programs. I think the only thing that's going to change this is a balanced budget amendment and for the people out there to notice who voted for it and get rid of those okay. who didn't vote for it. All right, before I let you go, you, you are attempting sure. to restrain the federal government from giving $75 billion to the International Monetary Fund so it can be wasted on the socialists in Europe. On, on that, of course, most people watching this show are 100% behind you. What are the chances that you can get undone what the Congress did in 2009 and President Obama signed into law? Well, I think it's about $108 billion we're on the hook for, and I think we've got to... We've got to fight that, and frankly, uh, you know, when you've got Spain, Greece, uh, uh, and, and other, uh, Italy, and, and a couple of other countries that are just playing, living beyond their means, living in their socialist dream world, who, uh, for instance, in Greece, a hairdresser, uh, who, because she's worked with uh, peroxide, right, hydrogen right. peroxide, can take a full pension at age 50. I mean, right. my gosh, right. when are we going to wake at up and realize we can't expense. keep this... Yeah, we can't keep supporting that type of profligacy. It's just right. that simple. We good, shouldn't. Good, good luck with these battles, Senator Hatch, and thanks very much for joining us. Well, nice to be with you, Judge. Keep it up. Thank you.